It was Saturday. Amy prepared herself very well, both physically and mentally. Physically by putting everything in place, the poison bottle well hidden in her bag and every other thing she needed. Mentally by continuously reassuring herself that everything would be okay. She was doing it for her son. She kept telling herself nothing would go wrong. She kept forcing herself to think that she decided to keep her mind on the positive side of everything. She was sure she was not in her right mind. No one in their right mind would be doing something like this. Her mind started drifting to how bad what she was about to do is, but she immediately waved it off. She decided to call the woman before she left for work. She called the number which was already saved in her cell phone. The number dialed for a short time before she picked up. Amy, why are you calling me early this morning? Are you retracing your steps? You want to back out of the plan already? She said immediately she answered the call. Amy thought for a while. Should she back out now? Now that it was still comfortable, then she looked at the consequences. Her son would die. No, she thought. Nothing like that. I'm not backing out now, Amy said. Then what brings about this early morning call? She asked. I just called to tell you that I'll be carrying out the plan today, so immediately I finish doing it. I'll meet you at that place we met the first time so you can give me the balance of my payment. There's no problem. Just contact me when you're through. Is there anything else? She asked. Just one question, Amy said. Yes? I just want to ask why you want to kill someone else's child. Amy knew she was not meant to ask that kind of question because she was carrying out the act and she was not less guilty, so there was no difference between her and this woman. Last time I checked, this was strictly business, so you don't have any right to ask me any question. Carry out your part of the deal and come and collect your payment. I think that's all, she said, anger depicted in her tone. Okay, I'm sorry for asking, Amy apologized. Better be, she replied, as she put down the phone. After the call, Amy decided it was time to go. She took her things and left to Rose's house. When she reached, she entered through the gate, then rung the doorbell. This time around, it was Sarah that answered the door. Auntie Amy, good morning, Sarah said, smiling. Amy stopped in her tracks. Was this coincidence or not? Today of all days, Sarah came to open the door. Does this little girl know that today would be her last day on earth? She looked so innocent, undeserving of all this, paying for a crime she knew absolutely nothing about. My dear, how are you? Amy asked. Auntie, I'm fine. Is your mummy in? Amy asked. Yes, she's upstairs in her room. Okay, let me go and greet her so that I can start my work. Go to your room. I'll call you down when breakfast is ready. Yes, auntie, Sarah said as she walked back upstairs. Amy made breakfast. She contemplated putting the poison in the breakfast so she could get it over with and leave immediately. But she decided against, as it would be too suspicious. She called Rose and Sarah down for breakfast. They came down. As they were eating, Rose noticed that faraway look on Amy, which was a normal since she resumed her duties. She wanted to ask her what the problem is once more, but decided against it since she already knows the answer Amy would give. As Amy prepared lunch, there was tears in her eyes. She couldn't back out now. It would be disastrous, and she really needed the money. She closed her eyes and mixed the poison up with Sarah's food. And then she served it. She watched as Rose and Sarah ate the food without any suspicion. Her heart bled. Mummy, I'm feeling very sleepy, Sarah said. Finish your food. After that, you can go and sleep, Rose replied. That was when Amy thought it was best for her to leave. Madam, I'll be on my way, Amy told Rose as they were still eating on the dining table. Already? Yes, Ma. There's some things I need to finish up today, Amy said. Wait, come closer. Why does it look like you've been crying? Madam, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe my eye is just red due to the smoke from the kitchen, Amy stated, smiling and trying to hide her eyes. Ah, Amy, but is it not the gas cooker you used? Where did smoke come from? Madam, I... Amy stuttered. Okay, you can go, since you're already through with everything you have to do. Thank you, Ma, Amy said as she left the house. 
Immediately she reached outside the gate, she released the breath she had been holding since she was in the house. What did she just do? She asked herself. It was just now that she realized that if anything happened to Sarah, she would be the first suspect. She decided to call her so that she would collect her balance and go give the doctor immediately so that he would start preparations for the surgery before anything happens. She took her phone from her bag. Hello? Was the mission successful? She asked immediately. She picked up the call. Yes, it was, Amy replied. I'm at the location already. Come and collect your balance. I'm on my way, Amy said as she switched off the call. Now, let me sit and watch as things unfold, she said, a wicked smile forming on her face as she dropped the remaining check in front of Amy. Amy had no time to waste. She stood up to go without saying another word. She went to the bank to cash out the money. Meanwhile, after Amy left with the check, the woman's phone rang. Are you through? Yes, ma'am. We did everything you asked us to do. Disguising ourselves as doctors and infiltrating the hospital was the easiest. That's good. There's one last thing you have to do. Anything, madam. Follow her. When she finishes cashing the check, I want you to steal the money, she said. Madam, that one is an easy job. It's done already. Thank you, and I need a positive feedback, she said as she dropped the phone on the table in front of her. She was very happy. Everything was going smoothly. Finally, all her hard work would pay off, and she'll have Mike all to herself. She smiled as she thought. It was evening already. Rose noticed that Sarah had been sleeping for long, longer than usual. She started sleeping around 1 p.m., and it was 5 p.m. already, and she had not woken up. She went to her room to wake her up. She opened the door and found Sarah still sleeping. Which kind of sleep is this one? She thought to herself. Sarah, wake up, she said, as she shrugged her shoulders slightly. There was no response. Sarah! She tried again, still no response. This is very strange, she thought. Sarah! She shouted as she hit her a little bit harder. Still, Sarah didn't budge. Rose started to panic. She started to hit Sarah frantically, trying to get her to wake up but Sarah didn't move. Which kind of problem is this one now? She asked herself. She decided to call Mike. Hello? Rose, how many times have I told you not to call me when I'm working? Mike asked immediately. He picked up the call. Mike, this one is an emergency, Rose said. I don't care. If it can't wait till I get back home, then don't disturb me again, Mike said, as he switched off the call. Hi, what do I do now? Rose asked rhetorically. Then she realized that the hospital was the only place to go. She didn't care. She took her husband's car keys, then slung Sarah across her shoulder and sped to the hospital. She was waiting in the hospital lobby for the doctor to come and tell her what was wrong with her daughter. She called Lola and Tony earlier and told them about what happened. They said they would be on their way to the hospital. They should be here by now, Rose thought. Immediately she saw Lola coming. Rose, please explain more. What really happened? That was when Tony also came inside. Rose was at least happy. She had friends to give her comfort when her husband wouldn't. They asked her what had happened. She explained everything to them in details. What is this one again now? Why would someone sleep and won't be able to wake up again? Tony asked. I can't even explain it, Rose replied. Lola just continued to shake her head in worry. So... You're waiting for the doctors now? Lola asked. Yes, ooh, they're still checking what's wrong. I just pray nothing has happened to my daughter, Rose said, already crying. Don't cry, we're here. Nothing would happen to Sarah, Lola and Tony said, trying to console her. Tony leaned her on her body as Lola rubbed her back. All would be well, they assured her. But she cried on. It seemed the words had no effect in consoling her. The doctor in charge of her daughter finally came out. Madam, I'm sorry to say this. I won't waste your time, so let me just be straightforward. Your daughter is dead. Very deadly substances was found in her system. She was poisoned. Rose started laughing hysterically. I know you doctors like to joke a lot, but please take it easy. This is someone's life you're talking about. Ma'am, we're serious. 
Your daughter was already dead before you even brought her here, the doctor said, sounding serious. Doctor, please, I don't know what you're talking about. I want to see my daughter, Rose said, already raising her voice. Tony and Lola tried to calm her down. Rose, take it easy. Let's just go in and see her for the last time, Tony said. Wait, Tony, stop right there. Are you trying to tell me that you believe what this doctor is saying? Rose said, looking at Tony. I'm sorry, let's go and see Sarah, Tony apologized. Lola knew best not to talk at this time, because whatever you say would be used against you. My daughter is not dead. She can't die. She was up and lively just this afternoon before she went to sleep. People just don't go like that. Maybe she just isn't moving. That's why these doctors have already pronounced her dead. Who is sure they're not quacks? Please allow me to go in and wake my daughter up, Rose babbled. Tony and Lola looked at each other. They started to wonder what would happen if their friend runs mad. Meanwhile, Amy had finished cashing the money at the bank. It took a while, so it was around evening she returned to the hospital. She arrived with the four million cash. She ran straight to the doctor's office. Mrs. Amy, please calm down. There's something we have to tell you, the doctor said. What is it? The money isn't enough anymore. Should I get more? Amy asked frantically. No, that's not it. Then what is it? You need to tell me, Amy said. Ma'am, I'll need you to brace yourself well for this. He paused, then continued. The nurse went to give your son his daily shots, and he was found dead. Amy was silent. So many things were going on in her mind. How did it happen? Where did I go wrong? She asked herself. Mom, there was something strange, though. Your son didn't die because of his sickness. He died of poisoning. Amy was starstruck. She needed not think again. She just walked out of the doctor's office and went straight back home. She didn't even want to see her son's corpse. When she reached home, she locked herself in the house. She opened the bag of money she was holding, only to find out it was just wads of paper, plain paper. Her life was finished. What am I still living for? She asked herself. Her son was the only reason she was living, now that he is dead. What else is she still doing on this earth? She had no money. She remembered the two suspicious-looking boys that sat with her in the taxi she took back to the hospital from the bank. She knew it was that evil woman that sent them. That woman was a manipulator. She didn't even think twice. She already knew who killed her son. She didn't know what she was getting herself into when she was doing business with that kind of person. She started laughing hysterically. This world has ended for her. There was nothing else she was living for. She didn't have any purpose in life. Her husband died some 15 years ago. She found solace in her only son, and now he too was gone. This was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. She didn't even question God, why he decided to punish her this way, why her life has been full of suffering. She didn't want to question God. Instead, she questioned herself. Did she think she can take the life of someone else's child and go scot-free? This was her punishment, she knew. She decided to leave this world and its hurdles behind. She went to where she stored her drugs, she took in every drug she could find. Then she lay on the floor and waited for death to take her. That was when she remembered that she had to speak to Rose. She was already getting weak, so she tore out a paper and took a pen to write a letter. Dear Rose, I want to apologize for everything I've done. I know you didn't even suspect me once, but I killed your daughter. I'm so sorry. I know nothing will make you forgive me. I wasn't the mastermind behind the murder, though. I was being ordered just because I needed money. I was so pushed to the wall because I didn't have money. I want to warn you that not everything that glitters is gold. You have to be very careful of... And Amy died, leaving the letter halfway. Rose entered into the sick room that her daughter was kept. Her daughter was already covered with the white cloth. She ran and pulled it off. The doctor and her friends came to stop her as they put back the cloth. She was shaking her dead daughter, shouting her name, trying to get her to wake up, but it was all to no avail. She slid to the floor and started crying. By this time, reality had struck her. 
her daughter was really dead. That was when Mike entered into the room. He was confused. He saw his wife on the floor crying. He saw a body covered with white cloth, probably a corpse, he thought. But what was happening? Can someone tell me what's going on here? Everyone was looking at him without saying anything. I said, someone should tell me what's going on here, he shouted. Sir, is this your wife? The doctor asked, pointing at Rose. Yes, she is. What's wrong with her? Mike answered. Then I guess this is your daughter too, the doctor said, pointing at Sarah's body. What do you mean? Mike asked in confusion. Sir, your daughter is dead, the doctor said. What do you mean my daughter is dead? She was very fine when I left the house this morning. She wasn't sick or anything. So what are you talking about? Mister, your daughter didn't die of any sickness. She died from poisoning, the doctor said. Poisoning how? Mike asked, still confused. Mister, your daughter was poisoned and it killed her, the doctor said. Whoa, Mr. Doctor, I'm yet to get you. So you mean it's my daughter's body over there? Yes, Mr. Mike ran his hands through his hair. Even if he had not been treating his wife well, he still cared for his daughter. He went and picked Rose from the ground so that they would go back home. She was reluctant to stand at first. Mike knew that consoling her was the most he could do right now. So he took her, and they went back home. It was just three days after Sarah died, Rose started to have second thoughts about her daughter's death. But she can't just die like that. We ate the same food. Why would she be the only one to die? Rose thought. That was when she came to realize that someone else must have poisoned the food. But who was it? It was Amy that cooked the food. Does it mean that it was Amy that poisoned it? No, no. Amy can't do that to me, she thought. But then again, Amy was the only other person in the house. No one else had come to visit her that day. She decided to go to the police station. She wanted to do it alone, without informing her husband, because she knew he would be strongly against it. She went with the policeman to Amy's house. That was when they saw her dead body. The body was already decaying. The whole house was smelling. They all covered their nose from the putrid smell that emanated from the decaying body as they searched her house. That was when the policeman found the letter she had half written. They gave it to Rose. She read it. What? Amy did this? Amy deprived me of my own happiness? I trusted Amy for Christ's sake. How could she do this to me? Nothing in this world can justify killing someone else. She must have been very heartless. She didn't have money and so what? How much was it that she couldn't tell me about it? This world isn't a fair place. Rose continued to lament with tears in her eyes. That was when she came to notice the part that said she wasn't the mastermind of the plan. That was when she knew that there was someone else after her. Who could that be? Why did the person kill Sarah and not her? What was the person's main motive? Rose questioned herself silently. So what you're trying to say is that Amy was the one that poisoned the food, but she was following someone's orders, Tony asked. Yes, you're right. Everything was said in the letter. I think she tried to warn me of the person, but she died halfway, Rose replied. People of nowadays, you don't even know who to trust again, so Amy could do that kind of thing, Lola lamented. Tony and Lola had come to visit her after the death of Sarah. They knew she needed her loved ones by her side always, so they came to visit as often as they could since her husband was always busy at work and her mother couldn't visit the house. So, I want you guys to advise me. Should I leave everything to God or look for who ordered Amy? How can you talk about leaving everything to God? This is how you'll be doing, and you'll lose your life, Tony shouted. Lola, Rose said, facing Lola, what do you think? Oh, I think you should do what suits you best, Lola replied. Is there any time you'll contribute anything useful? Rose teased. So what are your plans with her? I told you to give me time, didn't I? Mike, I've given you more than enough time, and you haven't done anything yet. I already told you, I can't ask for a divorce right now. The woman is still mourning for crying out loud. Oh, okay. I'll wait, she said in conclusion. 